Hi everyone, I'm going to present this paper about uh, mixed way integral attacks on reduced round AES with unknown secret Xbox. The attacks that we are going to present are in the loaded scenario. So, as first thing, I would like to recall uh, what um, a, loaded, a loaded scenario is. So, when we, are, when we want to evaluate the security of a cipher or of an H function, we usually try to maximize the number of rounds that we can break without exhausting the book code book or the key space. And this is very, very important because uh, it allows us to determine the security margin, for example, of a cipher. However, in many cases, uh, um, by exploiting this approach, the attacks uh, um, become non-practical. So they are very close to um, brute force attacks. Um, low data scenario is uh, a bit different. So um, in a low data distinguisher or um, in a low data attack, the idea is to impose some restriction on the attacker resources. And this is much closer to what happens uh, in real life. In particular, in the low data scenario, um, the time complexity of the attack is not uh, limited. I mean, beside the natural bound of the exhaustive search, while the data complexity is restricted to only a few known or chosen plaintiffs. So in this paper, we focus uh, on um, uh, AES, and we are going to present a new secret key distinguisher and new key recovery attack for uh, round reduce um, AES. We think that um, the most important uh, result of our paper is a new secret key distinguisher for uh, pre-round of AES, which is uh, independent of the secret key. Uh, we call this distinguisher an impossible mixture integral distinguisher. Uh, integral because um, we use uh, a zero sum property. Mixture because um, the starting point of this distinguisher is the mixture differential distinguisher proposed at um, FSC 2019. Uh, yeah. And impossible because um, the property that we are going to prove that, that we are going to exploit um, holds with probability zero for the case of uh, uh, free round of AES. Here we have a comparison between our distinguisher and other distinguishers in the each tour. In particular, I think the most important, most interesting comparison is between our distinguisher and the truncated differential one. As you can see, our distinguisher requires, requires half of the data um, that um, the truncated differential distinguisher requires uh, for the same probability of success. For example, if you want to distinguish free round of a yes from a random permutation with probability of around 65%, our distinguisher requires only six chosen pentex, while the truncated differential one requires 12 chosen pentex. And in a similar way, if we want a probability of success of 95%, our distinguisher requires only 10 chosen pentex, while the truncated differential one requires 20 chosen pentex. There are other distinguishers in the literature. In particular, we have the integral one, the zero sum, uh, which requires two to the eight chosen pentex. And finally, we have um, the yo yo distinguisher, which actually requires a total of four um, of two chosen pentex and um, two. Uh, adapted chosen surfex, uh, um, but I mean, here yeah, the scenario is a bit different because um, adapted, so, uh, adapted chosen surfex are required. In these two uh, last cases, the probability of success is very, very high, uh, let's say approximately 100%. So I think this is our main result, uh, and I'm, and um, large part of this presentation is about uh, um, this, uh, this new distinguisher, but apart from that, we are going to present new key recovery attack for AES, either in the case of a known S-box or in the case of a um, secret S-box. <coughs> so in particular, we are going to present uh, new attacks on four round AES-128. Our attacks require, uh, requires um, six chosen paintings, but they don't exploit uh, the details of the key schedule. So among the attacks that um, they don't exploit the, um, the details of the key schedule, our attacks are the best one. Um, if you also consider the key schedule, but the details of the key schedule, there are other attacks that are better, and um, in particular, I think this is the most interesting one because um, uh, the, the cost is um, practical and it requires only um, four chosen paintings. But again, this attack requires uh, exploit the details of the key schedule. So if you change the key schedule, this attack um, must be modified. We also consider the case of a free round of a yes with a secret S box. 
<coughs> so the idea is to replace um, the ASS box with um, a, secret a secret one, and we propose uh, a new attack uh, in this scenario, uh, which has the lowest uh, um, data complexity. Um, so in the case of uh, a secret S box, there are in two strategies that uh, an attacker can exploit. The first one, this strategy S1, uh, in this case, the attacker first uh, finds the details of the S-Box and then exploits the details of the S-Box in order to find the key. There is also another strategy where the attacker directly finds the key without uh, finding any details of the S-Box, and in this case, the idea is to um, exploit um, some particular properties of the uh, matrix that define the mix column uh, operation. So, um, in our attack, we use uh, we exploit the first strategy, so we are able to find the key and the details of the S-Box faster than uh, um, these two attacks that are present in the Gisha tool and that exploit uh, the second strategy. So the presentation is organized as following. First of all, I'm going to recall uh, um, a yes. Then I'm going to focus uh, on this new uh, mixing target distinguisher for pre round of a yes. I will briefly present these um, uh, key recovery attacks and finally I will conclude with some open problems for future work. So what about AES? Well, AES is a SPN block cipher which is based on a design prin principle known as the white tree design strategy. Uh, the block size is of uh, 16 bytes which organize in a 4 tens square matrix. The key size is of 16, 24 or 32 bytes and depending on the key size we have 10, 12 or 14 rounds. Each round is composed of four steps. We first have the key addition, then we have the S-Box uh, uh, layer, so basically the only nonlinear operation that works at byte level, and then we have two linear operations, which are the shift rows and the mixed column operation. For the following, I'm going to recall the subspace train notation um, that um, allows us to uh, describe this attack uh, in an easy and formal way. And in order to do this, uh, I'm going to define the following subspaces the column space, the diagonal space, the inverse diagonal space, and the mix space. <laughs> so, the diagonal space is a subspace of text with um, either active or constant diagonal. So, for example, in this case, we have um, um, the first diagonal which is active, and the other ones are equal to zero. So, we denote the diagonal space by the letter T, and this index um, zero. Um, basically is refers to the, to the position of the active diagonal. Now, if we take a, a coset of this um, um, diagonal space, it is easy to prove that after one round, um, this coset uh, is mapped into a coset of a column space, which is basically um, a subspace uh, where we have active co either active columns or constant column. Now, if we consider another round, another round and uh, if we start with a coset of a columns, uh, uh, subspace. Then after the S-Box and the shift rows operation, um, this coset is mapped into a coset of an inverse diagonal subspace, which basically is defined as a, um, a subspace of text with either uh, active or constant anti-diagonal. So anti-diagonals are like this. And then if we, uh, if we consider the full round, um, we have at the end a coset of a mixed space. For the mixed space, is obtained by applying the mix a, the mix column to, to this uh, inverse diagonal subspace. So we have that um, um, the diagonal subspace, the column subspace, and the mix subspace um, form a subspace tree of AS of line two in the sense that each coset of a diagonal subspace is mapped into a coset of a column subspace after one round, and that each coset of a column subspace is mapped into a coset of a mix subspace after uh, another round. This result can also be described uh, using the classical truncated differential notion. Um, so here we consider the difference between two texts, uh, a white um, byte and not a byte with um, zero difference, uh, and a black byte and not a byte with uh, uh, non-zero difference. Um, if we have two plain texts that differ just in one diagonal, then after two rounds, uh, where the final mix home operation is omitted, the two corresponding subtexts uh, differ in one anti-diagonal. Equivalent, if we take two plain texts that are in the same coset of a diagonal subspace, or if you want, whose difference is in, uh, in a diagonal subspace, then after two rounds, the corresponding subtexts are in the same coset of a mixed subspace with probability 1, while for the case of a random permutation, this happens with probability 2 to the power of minus 
96. Okay, using this um, notion, we are going to record first the mixed differential distinguisher um, that was proposed at um, FACITOS 2019, and then using this distinguisher starting point, we are going to propose our new distinguisher for three rounds of AES. In order to do this, we introduce this notation. Um, without loss of generality, we just focus on coset of um, columns of space uh, where the fourth column is active, and we take text uh, in this uh, um, affine space. So, um, given a, a text um, P in this um, coset, we have that P can be, can be written as A, which is the um, constant that defines the coset, plus this matrix, where obviously in the second, the fourth, and the last column are equal to zero. So, for simplicity, we can just rewrite this, um, this, text, this text in this way, um, so we can just refer to such text uh, via its generating variables. <coughs> Okay, so consider two plaintiffs, P1 and P2, in a closet of um, common space, where um, um, these are the generating variables of the first plaintiffs, and these are the generating variables of the second plaintiffs, and we assume for simplicity that um, all um, generating variables are different. Then it is possible to prove that uh, if you consider the corresponding ciphertext of the full round, and if you take uh, um, their difference, this difference belongs in, in a mix subspace, if and if there are other um, pairs of plaintiffs for which the corresponding subtext have the same property. And these new pair of plaintiffs uh, are generated by mixing the generating variable of P1 and P2. For example, in this case, we swap the first generating variable, and in the second case, we swap the second generating variable, and so on, um, for a total of eight possible combinations. Now, we have a similar result if um, um, some of the generating variables of the first plaintext are equal to um, the generating variable of the second plaintext. For example, in this case, we have that W is equal for P1 and P2. So we have the same result where here, where here we are just going to mix the variables that are different and we replace um, W by uh, omega, where omega can take any possible value in F2 to the 8. And the same happens if um, um, two variables are equal for P1 and P2. Now, I'm not going to record the full proof of this result, which you can find um, um, in the corresponding paper. I'm just, record, I'm just going to record the, um, the idea of the proof, because uh, um, this is the starting point for our new distinguisher. So we have a, um, a distinguisher, we have a property on four rounds of AS, where basically we start with um, a coset of a common uh, space, uh, and we finish with a coset of a mix space. And we consider um, we consider the property that um, two texts uh, are in the same coset of, the, of this mix space M. But as, as we have seen before, um, two texts uh, are in the same coset of a mix space M, if and only if uh, two rounds before, they are in the same coset of a diagonal space D. So instead of working with uh, four round uh, and with the mix space M, we can just focus on the first two initial round and replace this mix space uh, with a diagonal space. And the idea of the proof is the following. Um, given P1, P2 as before, and at P1 and at P2 as before, so where the idea is that um, at P1 and at P2 are um, um, obtained by mixing the generating variable of P1 and P2, the proof uh, follows from, the from this fact, so that the difference of P1 and P2 after two rounds is equal to the difference uh, of at P1 and at P2 after two rounds. Um, in other words, if we take the sum of these four stacks, um, this sum is equal to zero. So we have a zero sum distinguisher for two rounds of AS. Um, this, is not this is not very interesting because um, the truncated differential distinguisher on two rounds of AS is uh, much more efficient, but this um, is, our, uh, is a starting point for our new distinguisher on three round of AS. <coughs> Which is the following. Um, let's, have, uh, let's consider four printex, P1, P2, P3, and P4, in the same coset of um, common space C0. <coughs> These are chosen printex, and they are defined in the following way. So P1 is defined as uh, x1, uh, y1, z, and w. P2 is defined as x2, y2, z, and w, where z and w are equal and where x1 is different from x2 and uh, y1 is different from y2. 
And then we take P, 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 P3 and P4, where basically the first two variables are equal, here and here. But then we have Z prime and W prime that are different from Z and W. So these are our shows, four shows and paintings. <coughs> and the property is the following. So let's consider these um, four paintings and let's consider the corresponding ciphertext after free round. Um, so suppose that um, two ciphertexts are equal in a particular byte. So this subindex i and j denote the position of the byte. Um, so if these two ciphertexts are equal, then for free round of a yes, it is not possible that the correspond that um, um, the other two ciphertexts are different. And this is independently of the secret key of the details of the details of the S box and of the mixed column matrix. So in other words, if we have two ciphertexts that are equal in uh, uh, one byte, then also the other pair of ciphertexts must be equal in uh, such byte. Or if you want, if two ciphertexts are different in a particular byte, then also the other two uh, ciphertexts um, must be different in, in that uh, particular byte. Um, this event, so the fact that um, two bytes are equal, two, two ciphertexts are equal in a particular byte and the other two are different in the same byte, can happen for a random permutation, and this allows us to um, distinguish free round of a yes from a random permutation. So, first of all, we are going to prove this result, which I think is the um, um, most important result of our paper, and then we try to understand the um, data cost of this uh, um, distinction. So, how to prove this result? Well, if we have four plaintiffs defined in this way, um, we have that uh, um, the corresponding sum after two of them is equal to zero. So potentially, if we consider a free round of a yes, we can just set up um, a key query attack. So we have the plain text defined as before. After two rounds, we have a this zero sum distinguisher, which is independent of the secret key. And then if we have the corresponding ciphertext after three round, we can just um, uh, work at byte level, guess the key, partially decrypt, uh, and find the key. So we know that um, for free round of a yes, there must exist um, a key for which um, here we have the zero sum, so a key that um, satisfies this equality. <coughs> this key must exist, and this, key, and this key is equal to the secret key. This is quite trivial. Um, so what is the idea? Well, if um, the ciphertexts are generated by a random permutation, then it's possible that such key does not exist. So it's possible that there is no key for which this equality is satisfied. Remember, for a yes, this key exists, it's a secret key. For the case of um, a random permutation, it is possible that such key does not exist. Now, we can obviously set up the key recovery attack, and this is also this is already distinguished. But the question is, uh, can we check this fact without finding the key? So it is possible to find um, an equivalent property in the ciphertext, which is independent of the key, that um, is satisfied, implies that no key um, that satisfied this zero equality ex, uh, exists? And the answer is yes, and uh, it's exactly the property that uh, uh, we showed you before. So, um, e, um, assume that uh, we have two ciphertexts that are equal in one particular byte, and such that the other two ciphertexts uh, are different. Um, now, if we have them equality as before, and if these two ciphertexts are equal, then obviously this sum is equal to zero. So um, this equivalent reduce to this one. <laughs> but now it's very easy to check that um, um, this equivalence has one solution, at least one solution, if and only if um, um, these two ciphertexts are equal. Otherwise there is no solution. But this is a contradiction. So if we have this situation, then there is no key that satisfies this equality. So, um, if we have this situation, for sure, the ciphertexts have been generated by a random permutation. We don't have to find the key. We already know that uh, if this happens, um, for sure the ciphertexts are generated by um, a random permutation. So, in the case of a yes, we need that uh, either um, these two ciphertexts are equal and these two ciphertexts are equal, or that these two ciphertexts are different and these two ciphertexts are different, working at byte level.
Okay, so um, we have this distinguisher, so we want to understand uh, um, the data cost of this um, distinguisher. So let's consider P1, P2, P3, P3, P4 as P4. Um, and uh, let's consider the probability. So let's consider the case in which the ciphertexts are generated by random permutation. Uh, let's consider the probability that um, this event happens. So the probability that um, two ciphertexts are equal in a particular byte and that the other two ciphertexts are different. It's not hard to check that um, this, this event happens with probability approximately 30%, and this is due to the polynomial factor. Um, so we have uh, that the probability is equal to 1 minus um, the probability that um, this event doesn't happen. Um, so here we have 16 because we have 16 different bytes. And um, um, so this refers to the case in which uh, all bytes um, of this vertex um, are different. And this refers to the case in which um, all bytes are equal or um, um, this event is satisfied. So um, two these two bytes are equal, these two bytes are equal, and um, um, they are. So these two bytes are different from these two bytes. Okay, so uh, let's consider n set of two pairs of printings, p and p prime, where um, p and p prime share the same uh, generating variable z and w, and where x uh, is different from x prime and um, y is different from y prime. So we have, we have n different set where um, um, you know um, where we basically take uh, we take different values of z and w. So given this uh, n set, we can construct uh, n prime different set s, where n prime is approximately n square alpha of uh, four pairs p p prime and then at p at p prime. So each one of these set satisfy does not satisfy the required property with permitting approximately thirty percent. So, if we want to distinguish a free round of AES from a random permutation with permitted that is higher of um, this probability proof, um, we need that um, um, the number n prime of different set S satisfy this inequality. For example, if we want um, to have a probability of, of success of 95%, then we need um, at least uh, um, 10 chosen plaintiffs. Now, um, Actually, this set, so the set defined in this way, so by combining all these um, pair of paintings are not independent. So this actually means um, that the probability, so the real probability is actually smaller than this one. So this is only an approximation. Um, so in the paper, we explain this fact in more details. Yeah, I just want to show that um, um, the real probability is actually smaller than the theoretical one, um, but the gap is uh, not too big. For example, this is the number of chosen printings, this is the theoretical probability that we obtain using this formula, and this is the practical probability. And you can see, for example, that when we, when we use uh, 10 chosen printings, we expect a theoretical probability around 97.6%, while in, the pra in practical, in practice, we have um, a probability of success of um, around 95%. So um, the gap is um, is reasonable, reasonable small. Okay, so we have a new um, secret key distinguisher for a free round of um, AS. As I said, we also propose a new key recovery tax, um, but this attacks are quite standard, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. In particular, um, if we have P1, P2, P3, P4, as P4, we, we have just seen that um, um, the sum of these four texts is equal to zero after two rounds of a yes, so, we can, so it's very easy to set up um, um, an attack on three rounds of a yes, um, working as in the classical uh, integral attack. So we have the plain text, the corresponding ciphertext, uh, we work at byte level, um, so we guess the key at byte level, we partially decrypt, uh, and we find the key that satisfies the zero sum. In a similar way, we can also set up this attack on four round. So again, we have the plain text as before, we have the ciphertext after four round. In this case, we have to uh, partially uh, guess an anti-diagonal of the final round, partially decrypt, and then working at byte level, 
uh, we again guess the key and we check that uh, uh, did zero sum is satisfied or not. If it is not satisfied, the key is obviously the guessing key is obviously work. So this is very very similar to the classical uh, integral attack on a yes. So I'm not going to uh, give more details. Um, we also consider the possibility to uh, set up an attack on four round of a yes based on, on the three round impossible mixture integral attack in, uh, integral distinguisher. This is obviously possible, um, but uh, we found that this is not competitive with respect to other attacks uh, in the issue. So I'm not going to give details about this. And finally, as I said, um, we also consider the case of um, a yes with uh, a single secret S box. So the idea is to replace um, the, um, the a yes S box with um, a secret S box, and this basically allows to increase uh, um, the size of the secret information. So, for example, um, for the classical yes, we have um, a secret key of 128 and 256 bit. In the case of um, um, a secret S box, uh, we have this uh, amount of um, uh, secret information. So the question in this case is, um, how does the security of AS change when the S box is replaced by a secret S box about uh, which the adversary has no knowledge? So it is possible to find the key and um, um, even the S box. Uh, by set, uh, setting up an attack whose cost is smaller than um, um, to the power of 128 for AS128, for example? And the answer is yes. So there are many, many attacks in the issue too. So in particular, as I said at the beginning, there are two strategies. Here we focus uh, on the first one, where the idea is to first find uh, the S box uh, up to uh, some unknown additive constant A, B and then to use this uh, knowledge in order to find the key. In particular, we, um, we exploit the same strategy that has been proposed uh, in this paper um, by this and at all at FSC 2015. Uh, in such a case, um, in such case, uh, um, the authors force find the S-box uh, using a particular technique that uh, is described in that uh, paper, basically a technique that is based on the um, zero-sum property, and then they exploit um, um, an integral attack in order to find um, uh, 15 bytes of the secret key for 4, 5, and 6 rounds of AS128. Um, in our paper, we basically use um, the same strategy in order to find the S-box, and then we are going to use uh, uh, our um, uh, zero sum property in order to find the key for three round of a yes, where our um, zero sum property requires only four chosen plaintiffs, while in the case of um, um, a classical integral attack, um, the attack requires 256 uh, chosen plaintiffs. That's all from my side. So, again, as our main result, we presented a new secret key distinguisher on three round of a yes, which is independent of the secret key and uh, which has the lowest data complexity in the issue tool. But there are obviously um, open problems for future work. So first of all, if it is possible to set up uh, an impossible uh, mixer integral distinguisher on four round of a yes, well, the idea would be to use um, the classical integral distinguisher on three round at a certain point. And finally, if it is possible to exploit um, this distinguisher um, that we propose in this paper in order to present new um, k recovery attack uh, for round reduced AES in the low data scenario, both in the case uh, of a known, uh, in the case of the known or in the secret uh, uh, S box setting. That's all. Thanks for your attention.